One way to solve quadratic equations is to see if they can be factored. It turns out if you can have something that's factorable, that means then it will be fairly straightforward to solve the quadratics. This, in my opinion at least, this is my favorite way of doing these. Because if it factors, you can actually have a very fast answer. Now, of course, the trick is to learn how to do factoring. The first step, or first thing I wanted to tell you at least is that not everything can be factored. So the first thing to do is often to check if you can even factor it. So this is something really, really important. Just keep this in mind that not everything can be factored. But if it can, uh, then it's not so hard to do once you get the hang of it. So we're going to be looking at things that can be factored here to start with. And I'm going to show you, first of all, if it is magically factored, then what can we actually do? And it turns out uh, if something is in factored form, in other words, if I give you a quadratic that's in factored form, it might look like this. y equals um, some letter a times x minus p times x minus q. Maybe it's like this, where a, p, and q are just constants. They're just numbers. Okay, so in other words, this could be like, well, like I gave you here. In this example, I say y equals 2 times x minus 1 times x plus 2. So in this case, a is 2, p is 1, I guess you could say, and q is, well, it's supposed to be minus q, so it has to be a minus 2 here. That may not be so apparent. I just want to show you though why we can actually do this now. The reason why we do this, we use the zero product uh, theorem. Uh, the idea is this, that let's say we're trying to multiply, oh I don't know, let's say a equals b times c. Let's just say we're looking at anything like this. If I make b zero, okay, so if b is zero, then this whole thing, I mean, zero times anything, it doesn't matter what I make C. If B is zero, that means this C, doesn't matter what it is, this whole thing right here will cancel out and we'll say then that A is then equal to zero because zero times anything. But what if I made C zero? In other words, I make B something, and this time I make C equal to zero. Well, the same thing happens. Any number times zero also makes that cancel out and I get then that a is zero. I guess I should say therefore for both of these. That's sort of the idea behind zero product. And we're going to use that idea right here. So if you take a look at this example, now I say find the roots of this following. Now remember what it means to do a root. To do a root means to find the zeros. Some people call them the, whoops, I should say the x intercepts. Remember, roots, zeros, x-intercepts, they all mean the same thing. You may be getting tired of hearing that if you've been watching these other videos, but that's because this is tedious. It is the same thing. I want you to, right away, when you see something that says roots or zeros or x-intercepts, they're all the same thing. The idea is that we have some sort of graph. I don't know what it looks like. Maybe it does this. I'm trying to find these values, right? These are the x-intercepts. Of course, the graph doesn't look like this, so I'd better actually take this out just to be sure that we don't get confused here. Let's look at this example. So y equals da 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 da. Now, a root or zero or x-intercept by definition means I set y equal to zero. So I say zero equals two times x minus one times x plus two. That's the whole point of doing a zero or x-intercept root. So what I need to do now then is take a look at what x values make this work. Now if you think about it carefully, we've got like three terms here. We've got a two times this mess times this mess. If I can make the two zero, that would work, but I can't change the two. The two is just a number, so I can't, I can't play around with that one. So I have no choice here. But in this right here, I can actually set this equal to zero. So what I can do is off to the side, I can say x minus one, I want that to be zero. What value of x makes that work? Well, x equals, let's see, put the minus one over, I can say plus one. Or you can just think about it, what minus one gives you zero? Well, one does. So that's the first answer. So that was what I did there. 
What about if I take this one? So x plus 2. If I make that one 0, so x plus 2 equals 0, then it turns out that making x minus 2, that will work. It turns out that's the other solution. So that means that if I take x and make it 1, I'll have 1 minus 1, which would be 0 here. I'd still have 0 times 2 times, let's see, this would be 3, I guess, if I made this a 1 here. So if x was 1 here, this would be 1 plus 2, which would be 3. So I'd have 3 times 2 times 0. And remember what we just learned. If I make any one of these things multiplied together, if I make one of them 0, it works. It solves this. So that's why x equals 1 works. And if, again, I want to take a look at this one here, x plus 2, making x equal minus 2, that makes this one right here 0. And that means that 0 times anything else makes the whole thing 0, and that's why this works. What this means, then, is if I wanted to sketch this graph, I could now. This is actually really powerful. So if something is in factored form, it's, it's really quick to find the roots. So remember, if we take a look at this graph, we can see that there's a number in front. It's positive. So that means it's a parabola that opens upwards. I know it's a parabola because if I expanded this, if I wrote this all out in expanded form, um, then I would have something in terms of x squared. If you're not sure, by the way, I can just do it down off to the side here. I would say um, 2 times, oops, I guess I should delete this here. So I'm going to erase this in a second, but I just want to show you here. So I can say x minus 1 times x plus 2. And what I have to do then is multiply x times x gives me, well, I'll have to have a big bracket here. So x times x gives me x squared. x times 2 gives me 2x. Negative 1 times x gives me minus x. And negative 1 times 2 gives me negative 2. Of course, I could rewrite that. I'm needing the brackets because there's a 2 in front of everything here. So I just got to not forget that. So that means I have a 2 in front. And then I would have, let's say, x squared. I would want to combine these two terms. So 2x minus 1x gives me 1x. It means it would be this. And if I really then want to expand this, I could say then that it's 2 times x squared because now I'm multiplying this. So 2x squared plus 2x minus 4. That's actually the quadratic that I'm looking at. That's what this is. Turns out if I factored this, I would get this. So I'm just trying to show you at least why it is that something that's factored is so easy to work with. Now I'm just trying to prove to you that this thing right here is a quadratic. See, because it's maybe not apparent right here in this form. In factored form, it may not be obvious that this is a quadratic equation and therefore has a, a, par a parabolic shape. But if you expanded this, you'd see that you end up with a quadratic equation with a being positive. And if a is positive, that means it opens upwards. And what I'm going to do right now is actually just ditch this right here because I don't think it's so important to what we're trying to look at. So I'm just going to delete that. Let's take a look, though, at what we can do with this graph. Because we found out that x is 1 and x equals minus 2, those are the two points where the graph crosses the x-axis. So that means if I label my axis like this, I know that at x equals 1, which is right, I'll do this in red maybe, at x equals 1, it crosses this point right here, and at x equals minus 2, it also crosses. So from just that, I can actually figure out then, uh, and because it opens upwards, because this is positive, I know that it's going to do something like this. Now the question is, how far down does this go? Of course, I could sit around and, and actually calculate what the vertex is. Um, if I wanted to do that, I could actually try it out. So I could say, well, the vertex, if you remember from before, the vertex, you could either say that it's halfway between the two x values, or you could say that um, in the vertex is at minus b over 2a. So from there, you could actually calculate it if you knew what a and b and c were. In other words, if we kept this version down here. So the point of doing this, of finding the roots, or the point of actually having things factored, is that it makes your job a lot easier to find the roots. So if someone gives you something factored form, it's really straightforward to find the roots.